Welcome to TCS, the Tech Central show. I'm Duncan McLeod. If you haven't subscribed to us on YouTube yet, please do so. You can do that at youtube.com slash techcentral. Alternatively, subscribe to our daily newsletter at techcentral.co.za slash newsletter. 5 a.m. every morning, you'll get an update with all the latest tech news, including the latest episodes of TCS. Now, we don't often t- get to talk logistics uh, much on uh, Tech Central, but they are an integral component of everything that's happening in the booming e-commerce space. And to talk about what's involved in logistics behind e-commerce, I'm very pleased now to welcome Lars Verl, who is the co-founder and CEO of Pargo into the Tech Central studio. Lars, welcome. Um, tell me a little bit about Pargo. Give us the elevator pitch about the company. How long have you been around? What do you guys do? Yeah, thanks. Um, Pargo is a last mile logistics business. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been around since 2015. Um, we started the company, founded the company together with uh, my co-founder Derek, Derek Hukert. Mm-hmm. Uh, we both have a background in e-commerce. We're from the Netherlands. We uh, arrived in South Africa in uh, 2012. Back then, still working for a big e-commerce company, uh, sent, sent to Cape Town to, to help grow this business. Very much attracted by the huge potential of e-commerce growth that we saw on the continent. Uh, but then very quickly realized the big challenges or the biggest challenge that e-commerce has is last mile logistics, is getting the parcels in the hands of the consumer. And for about two years, uh, working with different couriers and trying to figure out what the real, uh, the real um, problem was, uh, eventually decided that uh, the solution for that problem was something that was bigger than, the, than just that one company we were working for, which led us to, to, to quit our jobs and start Pargo. Okay. And... What Pargo does uh, specifically, it's a bit unique, is we basically operate the, the pick-up point or click-and-collect model. So we partner up with uh, thousands of uh, existing stores throughout the country and allow people to send and receive or return orders at those, uh, at those stores. Okay. And the biggest challenge we, try, we saw back then and I think still exists and really the problem we're trying to solve was that at that point in time, we had months where up to 30% of our orders were just never reaching the end user um, because of address problems, because of the areas where they live in, be it uh, a township that's high risk or a big living estate that is, has a big wall around it, uh, you know, people in offices, or big buildings that don't allow couriers to get into their, into their uh, buildings. So there's a whole bunch of reasons. And then on top of that, just the, the sheer reason that a lot of people are not at home at the exact time mm. that the courier gets there. So a lot of reasons why people were not receiving their parcels, and we came up with a very s- simple solution, the pick point drop-off model, um, and that's kind of how we started, started Pargo in 2015. So, so have you always been in the e-commerce uh, space? What is, what is your background? What is Derek's background? Yeah, so Derek and I have actually known each other for a very long time. We, we, we met each other in, uh, in university. Um, and uh, both studying different things, and uh, after a, a, a few years uh, later, um, a bit through coincidence, by a third friend of ours that was that joined Groupon uh, at that point in time, very fast growing uh, across the world. I remember Groupon, yeah, yeah back mm. in back in Amsterdam. Uh, so we joined Groupon in in 2010, um, and that was really the start of the e-commerce uh, story. Did that for a few years in in, in the Netherlands, a huge growth uh, there at Groupon, right. and then. When their growth was also that they were expanding aggressively into many markets across the world, mm-hmm. including South Africa, and that was when, uh, which was actually started by two South Africans here and then sold to Groupon, uh, the company, and then we were asked to come to, 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 to basically do a project for two years. The plan was that we would move back to the Netherlands, but 10 years later, here we still oh, are. Yeah. Yeah. Is Groupon still around? Uh, they are still around in a few countries around the world, but it's 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 not what it it's, once was. It's, no, it's not what it's I mean. It's 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 a great story of huge success in the early days, but then also huge failure after yeah. that. So like very quick growth and very quick decline in in a very short period of time. Yeah, yeah, must be. A, I'm sure there are a couple of books been written about that. Exactly. Yeah, um, a lot of learnings. A lot yeah, of yeah, for important sure. learnings. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So you've been going since about uh, 2015. Uh, have you been through various funding rounds? Uh, do you have venture capitalists backing you? Yeah, how, we, how did you raise cash? Yeah, we raised we yeah we've raised some money. We we raised a, uh, a kind of a first uh, seed round in uh, twenty uh, seventeen, beginning mm-hmm. of twenty seventeen, and raised a kind of follow up round on that about about a year ago. Um, biggest names that that, uh, that people in South Africa probably know is Alan Gray. Uh, their venture fund is one oh, of yes. our backers. 
uh, and then uh, Endeavor, it's, which is an mm -hmm. entrepreneurial group, which we also part of as entrepreneurs, and then also have a bit of backing from them. Mm -hmm. And a, um, uh, a Cape Townian based uh, investment fund called uh, SAD, S A S W A D, that, that back us. Right, okay. Yeah. And the, have these been Series A rounds? Yeah, so it's been a seed, and now I'd say like a pre Series A, Series okay. A, uh, what we've just, uh, we've just closed. And will you go through further rounds over the coming years? Uh, Probably. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we, are, we are building the business quite, uh, quite aggressively right now. Right. Also, for the first time, looking at, uh, at expansion outside of South Africa. So if everything goes well and we can continue the growth, uh, the plan is that we then, uh, we then probably at some point will need, uh, we'll need extra backing to, to take it to the next level. Okay. And those, those um, other countries that, that you will expand into, will they be neighboring countries to South Africa no. or will you look at jumping into another continent? No, we want to... So, yeah... Um, our mission is to create access in Africa. That's okay. big on our walls in the office. And what we see as the huge opportunity here is e-commerce growth in Africa. Yeah. But the problems that I was talking about earlier, we think that that's even bigger in the rest of Africa. Many African countries, we see, just like South Africa, we see this big growth happening in the e-commerce space. Mm -hmm. But accessibility and affordability are, are two major issues. I spoke a little bit about the accessibility. I think affordability is obviously a huge issue and mm -hmm. a huge uh uh, blocker. If if your delivery cost is too high, then then you know e-commerce becomes very difficult. And sure. we see that in across Africa, uh, last mile logistical delivery can often be four times higher than what it is in in, in mm -hmm. the modern Western world in America and Southeast Asia. Um, and our model, not just because of the convenience that I explained before of collecting whenever it, it suits mm -hmm. you best, but also that we are able to consolidate. We are able to send a hundred parcels to ten points instead of to ten two hundred different addresses. Yes. And all of those hundred orders are going to be successful on the first attempt. So our cost per order actually mm -hmm. drastically comes down, making e-commerce uh, much more accessible and affordable, mm -hmm. especially in those hard-to-reach areas. And you know we see that huge success in South Africa uh, in 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 areas outside of the big major uh, uh, urban hubs. Mm -hmm. So outside of Johannesburg, Cape Town, Durban, um, you know we do quite a quite a, we're quite successful in the Eastern Cape, quite successful in in, in small towns around KZN, well, and all across the country, right? Interesting. Because uh, the alternative we, we provide there is just much more affordable and accessible mm -hmm. than, than, than a normal home delivery. So yeah, the plan is back to, you know, back to the question. The plan is that we want to, to take this into multiple uh, mm -hmm. African markets. Okay. Now, you, you're partnering with retailers. Um, I, I know this because I'm testing part yeah. of the system at the moment. And I have a delivery waiting for me at, at the near, near, nearby Click store. Yeah. Um, you work with principally retailers, do you, on these collection points? Uh, who, who are your partners? Yeah. So it's all types of retailers, all types of stores. I mean, the big names would be, uh, we have all the click stores on board. We have uh, the Caltex uh, service stations, uh, quite a few shell, shell service stations, uh, but also uh, Mr. Price is a partner, uh, Cape Unimart, mm -hmm. uh, the Fashini Group, um, supermarket chains like Spar, uh, Woolies coming on board right now, so it, it's it's mm -hmm. it's a big uh, it's a big group of of multiple big retail groups. But then besides that, we also have many hundreds of mom and pop stores, spaza shops, uh, independent uh, entrepreneurs and independent retailers that mm -hmm. use their stores also as these pickup points. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we have about just under four thousand across the country uh, in South Africa, uh, and still growing. And really, with a pickup point in every suburb, town, postal code right. in in South Africa. So I mean, it has to be really tiny if we don't have something there. Yeah. Uh, but through that partnership model, obviously being able to, to, to expand that quite quickly. So what's in it for the, the retailer? Um, let's say Clicks, for example. Yes. I'm going to walk into the Clicks store. I presume that's an incentive enough yeah. to partner with you because I might yeah. pick up something else while I'm there. Exactly. That's, that's the main reason. We do pay a very small, uh, we pay a small fee for every parcel that, that they process, but mm -hmm. that's really just to cover the kind of the basic cost. Right. The, the real reason they, they do it is for traffic into the mm -hmm. stores and the upsell opportunity. Yeah. We've seen that about... Uh, on just under 50% of customers that go into a store will, will, will combine that with a small purchase in oh, that wow. store, right? Mm -hmm. um, and especially, as you know, all these stores these days have those little aisles where you, you know, with all the sweets and all the things and <laughs> there's the, the Coke cans and the or cigarettes if you smoke are obviously in your face. So yeah. it's very easy for you, obviously, to combine that with a purchase when you collect your parcel. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, just give me an <coughs> idea of how this works practically. Let's say I'm a, I'm a, I run an online shop yeah. selling widgets. Uh, and I want to. I want to have that. I've sold a widget now, and I want to have it delivered to someone in Durban, say. Yeah. Uh, and I and I want to use Pargo. Um, exactly. Do I engage with Pargo myself as the as the online retailer, or or yes. do you work with the the courier companies? So we partner. We 
are we, like all the retail, the 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 the, the e-commerce companies will be our clients. So we go out and and have uh, many of these e-commerce businesses that work with us, um, and we provide them really an alternative. So. We are not a logistics company that in, in, the, in, the, in the, we don't have trucks, we mm -hmm. don't have drivers. We actually have, we use two or three preferred couriers that already exist in the country to take those parcels from the warehouse, from the retailer, from the e-commerce company to these pickup points. Okay. But we do have the relationship with the uh, e-commerce company. So they see us almost like as a courier, although we're not. Yeah. Uh, the way it works is that it's really just an added, uh, an added service, right? So we're not in the game to... If they have a good relationship with the courier already, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Keep that, right? What we're saying is that there's there's somewhere around 20, 25% of online users that, for all the reasons I men mentioned earlier, would prefer to not have that parcel delivered to their home, but rather to sure. a pickup point, right? And then we come in as a second option on the checkout page, the Pargo click and collect. Uh -huh. And that opens, that little widget opens up the 4,000 stores where consumers can just choose the one that's close to them. Right. And then just practically how it works is that as soon as that order is placed, we then inform one of our preferred couriers to collect that parcel. We deliver it to the store. Mm -hmm. At the store, it gets scanned in, and that triggers an SMS uh, and an email to the end user, to the consumer, to go and collect. And then they have eight days to collect. So that's obviously one of the big reasons. You, don't, you're not, you, know, you can collect when it suits you. Sure. You can do it on the weekends. You can do it in the evenings. Many of these stores that we have on board are also tw open 24-7. So it's really about the convenience for you to collect when, whenever you want to, want to. What about security? I mean, we know about yeah. crime in South Africa. If I order, a, say, an expensive mm. Apple laptop and, and have that delivered to my local retailer, uh, yeah. what happens if something goes wrong or someone in that store decides, oh, I'd like this? Yeah. yeah imagine two, two Dutch guys come to South Africa to solve an e-commerce problem <laughs> and uh, their solution is to, uh, to open up pickup points at Spaza shops. So <laughs> you can imagine how much, uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, South African advisors and, and partners and you can imagine how they all kind of say, guys, you guys are crazy. This is never going to work. <laughs> Um, the reality is, well, first of all, because of all the warnings, we've, we've built a system that is very safe and secure with mm -hmm. a lot of checks and balances that, that we make sure that throughout the process goes well. Uh, the reality is that we have a very, very small uh, loss, loss rate of parcels. And of the parcels that go missing, it's almost all due to hijackings of our trucks, uh -huh. but not into the, in, in, which is a, a common problem within the courier space, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but not uh, at these pickup points. And the reality is, that it's not very lucrative to start going and buy and to start taking these little uh, parcels, right? Because you said it could be an iPhone, that's true, but the mm -hmm. chances of it being an iPhone are just as big or much smaller than it being a book mm -hmm. or it being a you know a pair of socks from a, yeah. from a, from a Mr. Price or something like that, mm -hmm. right? So um, if you are working in that store and you're taking a you know taking a big risk by starting to steal parcels, mm -hmm. um, obviously, uh, and it's a pair of socks or a book, it doesn't mm -hmm. make sense for you. And I think maybe the, the good the good news as well is that I think for a lot of people that work in these stores, their job and you know having a job and being able to to, to, to do that on a day to day basis is obviously way more valuable than sure. than that risk of a small parcel. Okay, no. but so if, if something does get issue. pulfed, uh, we have an insurance uh, policy insurance. in place, right? Okay. So every parcel is insured. Mm -hmm. uh, if it does go missing, we we yeah insurance okay. pays out. Okay, yeah. okay. Now you, you were saying just before we started recording that uh, you don't um, operate a network of lockers, or you've done some experimentation yeah. in that area. There are players in that space. I've mm. seen I've seen these lockers pop up. I think Macro operates its own lockers yes. in some areas. There are there's some career companies have their own uh, locker yeah. systems. But y you guys have um, worked chosen to work rather with retail partners. Mm. Um, so you go up to a counter rather than going to a locker and typing in a code. Um, why why not go the locker route as as yeah. other career companies have done? So we have we are partnering with a, f a few locker companies in very specific areas, okay. but it's not it's a very small part of our business. Uh, the reason we've not gone the locker route is that it has a lot of limitations. Lockers obviously are mostly outside, so there's only certain areas where you can open up lockers and that they are safe. Mm -hmm. The, lo the, so the solution is growing, and there's a, there's a few careers now trying to do it, and we are seeing the successes of it. Uh, it's a much bigger um, uh, investment, so your scalability of the locker model is also is also smaller. And what we've picked up is that a lot of the retailers that then whose space you would be using actually prefer the face-to-face -face contact with the consumer instead of them just going to a machine mm -hmm. that will uh, bring down the chances of that upsell opportunity. Right. Um, and currently, which is a bit uh, you know an issue the whole country is obviously facing is load shedding, mm -hmm. which is also a big issue on these lockers that obviously. Ah. Mm -hmm. You go and collect your parcel, and there's now four to six hours per day. Those 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 uh, lockers actually won't open. You can't collect your parcel, and that's obviously not. Yeah, that's very frustrating. So, um, 
we are looking at you know here and there where we do use them in big malls, for instance, with a few selected uh, selected partners, for, uh, clients. But uh, kind of gener generally, we feel like the the counter model is is much more scalable and much quicker scalable. Fascinating. And, and do you see the same in the rest of Africa as well? I presume the rest of Africa, we we, we leave the same. Like where we see huge, uh, uh, where, where I've seen lockers work really well is in certain European mm -hmm. uh, countries and cities where. Uh, Almost everybody in the population uh, travels by uh, public transport. Right, trains, don't, don't have their own, don't use their own cars. Where you have train stations and, and, and bus stations, where you just have these full of lockers and they're safe there, and then yeah. then it works really well. Yeah. We don't really have that situation as much in South Africa. Understood, understood. So delivery to pickup points. How does that impact on the costs associated with last yeah. mile delivery in South Africa and, and the e-commerce system more broadly? And I suppose allied to that, um, what are the margins like in your business? Are they pretty brutal? Look, I think uh, margins within the logistics space are are you know small. Mm -hmm. We it's not a big it's not a high margin game. It's a vo big volume game. You know you yep. need to do a lot of parcels. Um, but having said that, as I said before, so the way it works with us is that or the way the the classic industry works is that every time every order has to go to a certain address, right? One one order per per person. Um, so that's many deliveries over many different addresses. And then secondly, a lot of people are not at home. So. The, the numbers are a bit different per courier, but we can see that um, within not just the e-commerce, but across all industries, you can have up to 30-35% of orders not reaching their end user on the first attempt. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine what that does to your cost and for your um, the scalability and the, the operating a courier network like that as a mm -hmm. courier business. With Pargo, uh, as I said earlier, this consolidation to these pickup points, so m multiple parcels per drop and 100% delivery rate on that first attempt. So typically our prices are a little bit lower than they are with home delivery. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on you know if it's within the main center or far away, but we have even up to areas where it's up to 80% cheaper. 80%? 80. 80%, uh, 80%, yeah. And uh, specifically, but typically it's somewhere between 20-30% uh, cheaper. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I wanted to ask you about COVID and the impact mm. that that's had. Um, it's been three years now since the first lockdown hit. Uh, and we know that there was a huge boon to the online shopping no. space in South Africa. And we saw things like Checker 6060 taking off in a massive way. Uh, how broadly did the co how did COVID affect the courier industry? I, I presume it was very negative initially, and then changed quite a yeah. lot. Well, yes. Yeah. Well, even even initially, it was negative because, mm. like any other industry, it went down Sorry, for those yeah. five weeks, right? Mm. But already, uh, the courier industry was was deemed uh, an essential services uh, industry. So I think most couriers, and the same for our business, we never went to zero, where like I think a lot of pe other people out there had a month of no, no sales. We, yes. we could still, it was, it was much lower than anticipated, but it didn't go to zero. That was the first thing. And then as soon as the first kind of five-week lockdown, hard lockdown, we went from, I think, from level five to level four, mm -hmm. and things started opening, it was basically the only way that uh, people could, um, could, could start shipping goods, mm -hmm. right? Uh, mm -hmm. Remember, take a lot being like big, uh, big... Uh, pushing really hard as well to get that, uh, to make sure that that would stay like that. And then I think the industry just took off. So mm -hmm. we saw a huge amount of, uh, it was just a crazy time. I think uh, we all got caught by surprise. So the career side uh, got overloaded by, uh, by demand, right? What sort of but volumes are we looking at here as compared to like normal in that period? Um, look, the industry, e-commerce went from, it was about 1% one, 1 of total retail was, was on, uh, Online was one percent of total retail. Mm -hmm. Now they think it's about it's about four percent, four to five percent. So that's sure. a four x over. You know that didn't just happen in one go, but that's mm -hmm. kind of overall it happened. Um, yeah, we saw huge growth as well. Not, not 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 with every client that big, but overall it went it went up. And not just within e-commerce, it was all of a sudden every type of business. Mm -hmm. The only way that people could get uh, products into the hands of their consumers was by sending it. Right, it was like this this this, this service where you had to send it to mm -hmm. them, or it had to be one of the essential goods. Um, so it was, yeah, it was a bumpy year, a uh, crazy year. I mean, also anecdotally, you could just see it. I mean, I think the best example I have is these two big clients, two big telcos that mm -hmm. I'd been, you know, trying to get on board forever. And, you know, I think that was like a one and a half, two year process already. And like, yeah, Lars, maybe, you know, good idea, but we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. And that was a Sunday evening that the president did the first, uh, the first ever kind of uh, announcement about right. this is, uh, this is family coming. meeting. Yes. Yeah. Remember that one. And, um, that was a Sunday evening. I think the, the, the announcement was at 8 or 9 in the evening. Yeah. And I think at 10 o'clock in the evening, I get a WhatsApp from like these two, like, Lars, can we have a meeting tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock first thing? Like, this mm -hmm. thing that you've been trying to sell us, we need it right yeah. now. Yeah. And, and that was kind of the, 
uh, the, the movement. So we saw not just that, that current clients or existing clients volumes yeah. went up, but also that all of a sudden everybody in the market needed a solution. So it was yeah, it was a, it was a crazy year. The actual click and collect, you know, what we're doing specifically, mm -hmm. didn't grow as fast because obviously people now still sure. have to collect. So you can imagine that that actually. Uh, Percentage-wise, stayed the same. I actually went down a little bit, sure. but just the pure, pure volume of everybody was just much higher. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and have, have we seen that being sustained as so, the economy has opened up again? Yeah. So what we've seen is 2020 being a bumpy year, 2021, uh, yeah, sustained. Yeah. But what we've seen is that last year, 2022, um, and we see that we read it about it as well, but we also saw it ourselves. Is that's actually been a really tough year for a lot of businesses, okay. also e-commerce businesses. So the percentage-wise, I think it's been sustained, but um, uh, the growth that a lot of companies were having, uh, obviously during COVID, but also before that, mm -hmm. has really come down, and it's really kind of, uh, I think people just have less money to spend, so sure. also less money to spend so online. So it's more of a, a factor of the <coughs> terrible state of the economy exactly. than anything yeah. else. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What we've seen specifically as a business is that, that that's definitely the case. We are still seeing that we're seeing that click and collect again is picking up again since COVID as a percentage, yeah, right? Yeah. So more people per hundred orders are mm -hmm. again choosing that kind of collection uh, service. I want to ask you about uh, the South African Post Office. Yeah, um, it's. Uh, I mean, there's been a lot of controversy around the Post Office, and and, and you know they're trying to enforce their monopoly over small items yeah. that weigh less, I think, than a kilogram. Yeah. Um, but the post office seems to be perennially, perennially broken. Yeah. Uh, do you see any opportunity or likelihood that the post office could become a meaningful player in logistics and e-commerce space in South Africa, yeah. or is it a lost cause in your view? Um, look, we can't forget and underestimate how many orders they are still doing internationally. So all the big uh, e-commerce players, like in China, yeah, and. Uh, Anywhere else in the world, elsewhere in the world, are still most of that volume is coming. A lot of that volume is coming through the post office. Through so, their post offices, or well, so what it works is if you go to Alibaba or to Shane or to one of these, you know, Wish, uh, and yeah. you use these big Chinese companies, um, you'll probably maybe you'll see that you can actually get a product which is coming from China yeah. for next to nothing in terms yeah. of delivery costs, yeah. right? It's usually so, the Hong Kong Postal Service, I've noticed. So what happens is that they give it to, indeed, there's, there's the, all the postal companies mm. in the world, post offices in the world, have an agreement together, okay. and they and that's really cheap, right? It's like made for letters, yes, right? And that's why, obviously, you can just post your letter and get it from here to anywhere in the world for, that, for, the, for a stamp, mm. right? And that same service, that same principle exists now for online goods. I mean, in a way... Uh, the growth of Alibaba as a global company has been uh, kind of subsidized by the post offices mm -hmm. around the world. It's, it's actually quite ridiculous if you think about it that way. Uh, and then obviously more and more of these big companies are thinking, because that service is not great, so they are thinking about how can we get that um, better so they'll work together with companies like uh, DHL or RMX, you know, big, mm -hmm. big global uh, e uh, logistics businesses. And you pay, obviously, uh, uh, you know, you pay $20, $25 to just get it through them. Mm -hmm. But then you know that you'll probably get it within a week and it will be... Mm -hmm. More certainty. So we're seeing there that we're seeing the post office still playing a big role. If you look at it domestically, obviously, I think there's, a, I, I have not heard or uh, come across any e commerce business as long as I've had this, you know, as long as we've run this the company that uses the post office. Actually, our growth and the opportunity and a lot of our early, uh, early success came from big businesses that were using the post office and that were just looking for right. alternatives. So we, in our first year, we actually saw big companies. That you know that would have never uh, taken the risk to work with a small startup, two guys with an idea, but they, they just didn't have an alternative. And because uh, what we're doing in a very mm -hmm. many, in, you know, is basically what the post office should be doing. So right. a lot of our growth has, has actually come from companies pre previously using post. So office. the private sector has really taken over a lot of the work that yeah. the post office yeah. should have been doing. Yeah. Yeah. in the first place. Yeah, yeah, Interesting. Yeah. Do you think there's still a chance that the post office could be turned into something? That I don't know. You know, yeah. like, I don't know. I think uh, I think a lot of people have tried it. I know Mark Barnes tried it for a, for a long time yes. there. Uh, I don't know him personally, but he seems sure. like a very uh, very capable man. And, you know, I think he, he left them eventually also mm -hmm. saying, like, it's, it's, it's not, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. I think there's... Okay. Bigger problems within the country, not just the post office, that are, yeah. that are preventing that, uh, that to happen at right. the moment. Yeah. Okay. Before I let you go, Lars, tell me a little bit about Pargo's future. Where are you guys yeah. going? I know you've spoken about um, expanding into other markets, but um, maybe a bigger picture. Where, where do you see Pargo yeah. positioning itself in the market? And um, do you see uh, maybe um, complementary areas that you might want to expand into? Yeah. 
So I think there's a few things. First of all, in South Africa, we still, you know, we still see that e-commerce, we believe e-commerce is still, although there's been a lot of growth, it's still very small. If you look at anywhere else in the world, the, the expectations is that it's still really going to take off. We're all going through a bit of a hard time, I would say, economically. I think everybody sees that, not just in South Africa, but globally. But if you take a long, long-term view, I think it's, you're going to start seeing that 10 years from now, e-commerce has really become a substantial part of our business, uh, of, our, uh, of our economy, of, mm. our, of, our, you know, of, of what we do. So we see a lot of growth, and, and what we're doing as a, you know, the service that we're in, we also see that globally is, is one of the fastest growing uh, last mile logistic yeah. solutions, right? So in South Africa, there's a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, opportunity for growth. Um, what we are looking at is, at the moment, we spoke most, of, also today, we, spoke, we speak mostly about it being a collection point, but mm-hmm. uh, this network, you can do much, much more. Already at the moment, you can collect a parcel, you can return your parcel, right. you can send your parcel. We're working on a pay for your parcel solution there as well. So we really want to become, um, you know, build a business whereby at these stores, you have these, this huge network of physical points where you can do many different things mm-hmm. to, to, to make your sending or receiving of a parcel just much, much easier. Sure. That's in South Africa. And then, as I said earlier, we see huge opportunity also outside of South Africa where we're looking at expanding into, into other, African, uh, ar- other African markets uh, outside of South Africa. So mm-hmm. we're looking at the whole continent. Usual suspects, I guess, are you know, uh, East Africa. So from Kenya, there's a lot yep. of happening. Uh, West Africa around Nigeria, there's a lot happening. And Northern Africa in Egypt. At the moment, we're running a small pilot in Egypt, actually. So that's, uh, that's going very well so far. I've heard a lot of people saying that Egypt is a very interesting market at the moment. Mm. No, it's, it's, I've been there now three times. It is, it's funny because it's, in a way, uh, obviously, Arabic and culturally very different to South Africa. Yeah. But from an economic point of view, and especially from an e-commerce point of view, very similar to what we see in South Africa. Um, in, in, in that way, that it, it, just like South Africa, has a few very big players that are online. Right. It has a reasonable kind of uh, middle, middle ground, uh, large to medium-sized businesses, and then has a very, long, a very big long tail. And we see the same in South Africa. Whereas the rest of Africa, you'll see a few big clients, big, big businesses, and then you know, millions of small businesses. Um, and then also, like just the the digitization of the country, uh, uh, the president really pushing there for for a lot of uh, you know, new digital products. There's a lot of fintechs, a lot of South African fintechs. Actually, in our office, we are our two offices in in Egypt. Literally, out next to us is Yoko, which is like you know down the road from from Cape Town from our office as oh, well. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Funnily enough, I was chatting to Stephen van Koller from EOH, who, which owns I, I yeah. and, and he was. Hunting Egypt in a big way. Yeah, yeah. so it's 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. I think there's a, there's a lot of happening there, and we we yeah, we just started. It's very early days, but um, some some early signs that it's a very interesting market for us. Excellent. Yeah. Look forward to seeing how the business uh, progresses. Lars Lars Verl is co-founder and CEO of Pargo. Thanks so much for visiting Tech Central today. Thank you. Yeah, great, Thanks, to, be, uh, great to be with you. Thanks. Thank you.